It made the Ottoman Empire almost fearless, going into regions that nobody had been there before. For the early Ottomans, the direction of expansion would always be to the west, for good reason. They could not expand to the east or to the south because those were controlled by their brothers, the Turkmen emirs, the Muslims, and a Muslim should not be fighting against a Muslim, so they said at the time. So the only place he could expand was towards the Christian territories westward. Osman's warriors moved to the north and west across the Anatolian plateau into territory controlled by the traditional Christian power in the area, the aging Byzantine Empire. By Osman's time, the thousand-year-old Byzantine Empire was reaching the end of its age, dwindling to an isolated stronghold in Eurasia. The Crusaders had already wreaked havoc across the region on their way to Jerusalem. Sacking the capital city and helping to reduce the once proud Byzantine Empire to a few small warring states. The Ottomans quickly overran these splintered Byzantine factions, uniting northwestern Anatolia into a single domain. In 1326, the Ottomans took the powerful Byzantine city of Bursa, a victory that would change the character of the Ottoman Turks forever. The most important part of Bursa was that it enabled Osman and his uh, descendants to establish a seat of the government. The restless nomads of the steppe would settle down to build an empire. What we're witnessing is this huge demographic event. The movement of a whole civilization from a nomadic way of life to a settled way of life. Now, when the Ottomans took Bursa and set it up as their capital, they were very concerned to establish themselves as the rightful standard bearers of Muslim civilization. Civilization meant organization, and the Ottomans set out to manage the vast regions they now controlled. Leaving the Byzantine clerks in place, they began to organize the new empire. First and foremost, taxation and record keeping. The word bureaucracy has since lost its noble connotations. Yet this was a great innovation, as ambitious as any triumph in battle. The Ottomans are known for including and synthesizing the cultural elements through the lands that they passed. They are known for creating structures by which the peoples who lived there before could carry on their lives and their beliefs in the way that they chose. In fact, the Ottomans had fewer conflicts with their Christian subjects than those of their own faith. Muslim adversaries intent on challenging Ottoman rule. One of the bureaucratic, or let us say, management problems facing the Ottomans was that there were still rival Muslim sort of proto-kingdoms around them. I mean, they were conquered by the Ottomans, but they had old grudges to bear. And they had certain claims to dynastic glory of their own. And they were constantly worried about these old Muslim families rising up and creating a rebellion. And so the story goes that they felt it it would be imprudent to have the army made up of these sorts of people. And so they wanted to recruit children who were not connected with any rival Muslim family. And so 
they went into the Balkans and they recruited primarily Christian children. This practice was called Devsherme. The young boys were technically slaves of the Sultan, but they weren't treated like slaves. First, they were brought into the Muslim faith, taught rituals of washing and prayer, and the Arabic and Ottoman languages. This served a political as well as a religious purpose. Through the Devshirme system, the Ottomans could create a caste without any conflicting loyalties to tribe or family. The children had such great future that a lot of the times Turks or even Muslims pretended that their children were Christian born and would register them with the Devshirme officials. The system was so beautiful in that they only had one allegiance to the Sultan. No family, no region, no other ties. These children were then given the best possible education available in the world, perhaps, at the time. And they were then able to move into the highest positions of power in the empire. Those who were brainy went to the palace schools and graduated into different levels of viziers and governors. It even became uh, grand viziers. Those who were brawny went to the Janissary Corps. The Janissaries were the Sultan's elite infantry. It was an army that would set the standard for centuries to come. They were the strongest, trained as military machines, no fear of dying, totally fearless, and their only love was to serve the Sultan. They were trained with all the precision and discipline, pomp and circumstance of a modern army. For the first time, an army wore uniforms and went into battle to the accompaniment of a military band. The Janissaries were the most feared troops in the Western world a force that was worthy of this new Islamic empire and its restless visions of conquest. By the middle of the 15th century, the Ottoman Empire spread from present-day Turkey, known as Anatolia, deep into the Balkans, with one critical exception. It must have galled the Ottoman Sultan that with his domains now stretching all the way into Asia and far, far into Europe in the West, there remained right in the center of his domains the greatest prize of all, the capital city of Constantinople, the most powerful, the richest, the most magnetic city in the entire world, still in the hands of the dying but not yet dead Byzantine Empire. To the Ottomans, Constantinople's strategic and economic importance was considerable. Its symbolic significance was even greater. It was the city. There was no other city. If you were going to rule that area, obviously you would rule it from that city. It's said that the goal of laying claim to Constantinople was decreed by Muhammad himself. Every Ottoman ruler since Osman had wanted to seize the city, but it had always remained firmly in Christian hands. Then a sultan came to power whose dreams of conquest would not be denied. History would honor him as Mehmet, the conqueror. When he assumed the sultanate, he was only 12 years old but he was already well-versed in Ottoman politics. To remove any threat of competition for power, he had his half-brother strangled. The empire always meant everything, more so than the family. In order to stop the empire from splitting, as had happened to other Turkish uh, dynasties uh, ruling the Islamic world, 
when a young man became sultan upon the death of his 